Hi, welcome back to CVN305. Continuing our discussion of stream, just to give you a quick recall so that we are, we are sure what we are talking about. I started with a square and I made it into a rectangle. That gave me two streams, epsilon xx that is this way stream, epsilon yy that was that way stream. So this was stretch it. And then we did shear it, which means I took the rectangle and I made it into a parallelogram. This angle was theta, so gamma xy was tan theta. And then we rotated it, but the rotation does not change the shape of it, it only changes the orientation, so we don't care about it in terms of measuring change of shape. Okay, So we got the three types of strings and we turned out that we are going to define epsilon xy is gamma xy over 2, epsilon yx equal to epsilon xy and we got some nice relations. Okay? So we were able to write it as a matrix and our notation is based on move the line. It should actually not, you should not think, you should not think about it as move the line because if I take a line like this and I simply translate it, there will be no string. <coughs> okay, it should actually be more complicated, it should actually say relative motion of the line. By relative motion, I mean the relative motion between the ends of the line. Okay, so that is our notation. So epsilon xx means motion in x along line x. So epsilon yy would be same way, gamma xy would be motion in x. along line in y. So this is shear swing. Can you see? The, the relative motion of one end is in the x direction compared to the other end. But the line itself was originally in the y direction. That is how the notation works. Okay, So we have gone through this. Now the next thing we want to do is just like with stresses, we are also very much worried about what are called principal strains. The maximum amount of stretch you can get. What do I mean by that? Well, think of the following. If I take a sheet of material and I drew a line, and I drew a rectangle that was oriented like this and I pulled it. What will happen is the sheet will go like this. The rectangle itself will go like that. Can you see? So depending upon orientation, upon initial orientation of the rectangle, sorry, of the, of the square, you will get different amounts of shear. So, do you orient it differently? For example, the same one, if I had oriented like this, it will become like this and you will see there is no shear. Okay? So, if you orient your rectangle in certain shapes, in certain orientations when you start out you will find that there will be no shear. In those directions the axial stretches or the axial strains will be maximum. So there are, so let me write this down, this is very very important. There are certain orientations of rectangles in 2D. So, let me write it down. Initial 
So it should not be rectangles, it should be squares. Thank you. I'll, re I'll rewrite this. Sorry about that. There are certain initial orientations of squares such that they will only become rectangles. No shear. That is, they won't become not parallelograms, but only rectangles. Those orientations are called principal orientations. And it turns out these orientations are orientations of greatest or least amount of axial speed. How do you find them? Well, you could do it in one of two ways. You can take a sheet of material, whichever one you are pulling. You can take a sheet of material, whichever one you are pulling and you can draw rectangles of different orientations, squares of different orientations. See how much they deform and then maybe some of them will go like that, some of them will go like this and eventually you may be lucky and you may hit upon the right orientation. In which case, the rectangle, the square will become a rectangle. If your orientation is not correct, if your orientation is not a principal orientation, squares will become parallelograms. If your orientation is the principal orientation, squares will become rectangles. So this is the key idea. Square to rectangle implies principal orientation square to parallelogram implies notice that the implication goes both ways if it is principal orientation then squares will become rectangles if it is not a principal orientation squares will become parallelograms not principal So how do you find these principal orientations? Well, I told you one method, draw different rectangles and you get different things. That's one method. Method number two, so this is method number one. Method number two is what is used in the metal forming industry. Why are they in the metal forming industry, like the one that I showed you, deep drawing and things like that, they are very much worried, worried about how much axial strain they can get because you know what they are doing, right? They are trying to stretch this thing out a large amount. And anybody of you who has rolled a tortilla or a, or, a, or a cookie dough or something like that, what happens is that if you stretch it too much, the thickness de decreases very much and you start getting holes. So this is failure by elongation. The previous one that we looked at was failure by, by stress. Here it is failure by elongation. If you elongate it too much, it will eventually fail. So they are very much worried about maximum allowable elongation. And they have things which are called forming limit diagrams. So these forming limit diagrams will tell you how much elongation is allowed at any particular location in the sheet. So when you do initial testing of the sheets, what they will do is a very clever idea. 
what they will do is instead of trying to draw squares in different directions they will draw a circle how does that help you so what happens is if i draw an initial circle it will become i told you it will become a ellipse right it's extremely easy now to identify the principal directions it is the directions in the ellipse which are along the major and minor axis of the ellipse so principal direction will be along the major and minor axis of the ellipse so what they will do is they will take a sheet of metal metal so they will start out with a sheet of metal and they will put lots of circles on it looks like polka dots lots of circles and then they will go and stretch it whatever this is a metal forming they won't do it all the way they will do it partially and when you do partial metal forming maybe the material has become like this because you did some material process and what happens is the ellipse will get like this and then it's pretty easy you can say okay notice principal axis is like that maybe principal axis is like this like that like that like that nothing has happened so this is zero this goes like that this is very long here very short here and this is reasonably long reasonably short and you can go and measure this thing and you'll get the principal strings this turns out to be kind of awkward and quite expensive especially when you're doing simulations okay if you are doing an actual test this is fine you can put polka dots on a on a sheet of material and pull it and you'll find it third method for doing that is our old formula method number 3 formula for principal stresses will also work for principal strains provided the strains the strain matrix entries are very small this is very odd you know it doesn't it doesn't our strain matrix our definition of strain matrix does not allow us to work in a certain way but typically speaking if my strains are very small then we can do the same thing that is in 3d principal strains are the eigen vectors eigen values of the strain matrix and principal stresses and sorry and principal orientations are the eigen vectors in 2d you can do this very easily we get the same idea epsilon min max is epsilon xx plus epsilon yy over 2 plus or minus square root of epsilon xx minus epsilon yy over 2 whole square plus epsilon xy whole square notice it is not gamma xy we don't use gamma xy we'll do epsilon xy similarly epsilon xy sorry gamma max will be epsilon will be square root of epsilon xx plus epsilon minus epsilon yy over 2 square plus 
epsilon x y whole square. This will give you gamma max. We are not so much interested in gamma max, but we are really interested in epsilon min epsilon max. In the previous case, for ductile materials, we were very much interested in gamma max. Now we are interested in epsilon max, epsilon min. Okay, for ductile materials, I'm sorry, it's not gamma max, it was tau max. You remember shear stress, Prescott criterion. If you're if I'm looking for failure by elongation by stretching too much, I am looking at at the maximum normal strain or the maximum axial strain that is allowed. Okay, that's why we care about principal strains. The formula is the same, provided you remember that epsilon x y is gamma x y over two, and that is tan theta x y over two. And we remember what this x and y means. X tells you direction of relative motion. Y tells you the line that we are looking at. So move the line. You know, just like face the force, it is move the line. Okay. Thank you very much. We will see the next one shortly.